It's a good day to brew, baby. What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, Millsy. Back in hometown, coming in. I'll be back for another episode of Millsy Brews, the show where I brew my version 1.0 deck list of the Commander in front of us on my quest to outbrew the magic world. We're continuing our 2023 roundup as we cover old decks and new, wrapping up the year as we look forward to new content in 2024. And this was a deck I just couldn't help but bring back. This is a deck that I brewed on the channel. Um, towards the end of last year and I was very surprised how much I liked this deck. I'm not a big Demir player, especially not a Demir Mill player, but this was a deck that I just loved because it was tribal and it was just a ton of fun. And as always, deck list is going to be in the description down below. We're talking about Captain Nagathrod, a 5-mana 3-6 horror pirate. This is Horus we control, have Menace. Whenever a horror we control deals combat damage to a player, that player mills that many cards. At the beginning of our end step, we choose a target artifact or creature card put into an opponent's graveyard that was put there from their library this turn, and we put it on the battlefield under our control. Mill plus stealing effects in the same deck is probably something that's going to make some players angry. And if you play in a pod or you play at a shop where people don't like mill or they don't like stealing effects, well, then I don't think Captain DeCathron's your commander. But if you're playing a deck, where you're playing at a table that always plays a little bit of power, likes to have a lot of fun, I think this is a deck that could have a good time into a lot of other decks. He's only five mana. We have a lot of really fun horrors. And I think our goal is going to be get horrors on board, get our opponents to mill some cards, and take some really fun things to build our board state. So that's our goal. Mill our opponents, take their things, profit. Of course, we might win the game off milling some of our opponents out. We might just win the game on power alone, stealing their creatures and just running people over in combat. I think more often than not, we're going to probably win by milling maybe some uh, combo or two we'll talk about or just uh, the amount of interaction we have with our opponents. So we're going to play a little bit of control as well. But I think the main way we're probably going to win is just milling our opponent's resource out. Now, anytime we play a mill deck, we need to keep something in the back of our head, which is that there are decks in this format that care about dumping things into their graveyard. If you're playing a Muldrotha deck or... Um, some of our other graveyard mining commanders in either Golgari or Saltai, you need to be very careful <laughs> how much of their graveyard you mill, um, only because they're probably going to thank you more than they're going to grin, uh, groan at you for milling for them. And if that's the case, that's the table you sit down at and you realize someone's playing that deck, do what you can. Recognize the important pieces and take it, but otherwise we're just going to have a ton of fun And we're going to start off talking about the key horrors that we're playing in our deck The horrors that are really let us have some fun There's been some new horrors that have gotten released over the last few sets and I won't go into too many of them But they're here and if you go on and take a look, look at the list, you'll see them um But let's talk about our important horrors consuming aberration is a five mana star star where it's Power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in your opponent's graveyards, and this is going to get huge. No evasion, though, just a big boy, but again, with, with Captain Out, it's going to have Menace. It says, whenever you cast a spell, each opponent reveals cards from the top of their library until they hit a land card and puts those cards in their graveyard. Aberration is just going to allow us to helpfully mill our opponents out a little bit every time it attacks. And every time it attacks, of course, hitting our opponents if they can't block it, and then every time we cast a spell. And that's what we want to see on a creature giving us that advantage. We have Nemesis of Reason, a 3-7 that says whenever it attacks, defending player mills 10 cards. Great way to hit something we want to see if we're just milling them for a bunch of damage. Night Howler says it, or the creature we enchant with it, gets plus X plus X, where X is the number of creature cards in all graveyard. Nightcrawler can turn, Howler can turn into a pretty big card to deal with when it starts getting absolutely massive and our opponents have to deal with it. Um, I'm sure you're, you hate hearing me talk about the card, but here's another tribal deck that gets buffed by roaming through Throw number one because it doubles. Number one because it doubles both of our commander's abilities, which is absolutely bonkers. But then it goes and doubles everything else, and that's roaming throw. Whenever triggered ability of another creature you control of the chosen type triggers, it triggers again. All of our horrors that have triggered abilities are going to get triggered twice, and it's a horror itself, so it's going to count for Nagathron's ability. It's probably one of the single best cards that's been released over the last year for this deck specifically, um, because it's just going to help us just absolutely pain our opponents a little bit more. There's one other card that's actually a Planeswalker that we'll talk about that I don't think looks half bad either, but I think Roaming Throne is probably the single best card we've seen for the deck in the last few months, and as much as I hate admitting that out loud is one of the reasons why I wanted to pull off the deck. Um, one of my favorite cards that got released for it in the same set it came out was Sludge Monster, 
It says when ETBs are attacked, we put a slime counter and to up to one other target creature. And the non-horror creatures with slime counters on them lose all abilities and a base, base power toughness 2-2. Uh, this is a fun card that when it comes in and attacks, we're going to start putting these counters on people's commanders or key creatures and start shutting people down and having some fun. And Sludge Monster pairs really well with Toxril the Corrosive, one of our big boy horrors and one we want to see. And probably one of my favorite cards that's been printed. Demi your cards have been printing the last little bit. It's just a ton of fun. On each end step, we put a time or a sludge counter on each creature we don't control. Creatures you don't control get minus one, minus one for each sl slime counter on them. Whenever a creature you don't control with a slime counter on it dies, you make a black slug. And we can slack a, sack a slug to draw a card. This, of course, paired with Roaming Throne or Sludge Monster. It's just going to start machine gunning down our opponent's board. Get more things into their graveyard. Give us the slugs. And then with the Gathrod's ability, hopefully getting us more for the value. It is a 7 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. It's going to be a lightning rod for removal. But all you need is exactly one turn cycle or one or two turns with this card to just start leveling the board. And I love it. It's everything I want from a deck like this. And it makes me really happy. That's very sad for me to say as a green player, but I love it. I think it's such a fun card. And it's exactly what I want from black removal or, or a deck like, or Demir like a deck like this. We have Thing in the Ice. It comes in with four ice counters. And whenever we cast an instant or sorcery, we remove a counter from it. Then if there's no counters, we transform it. And when it transforms over, we return all non-horror creatures to the hands. One-sided board wipe, hopefully that's just going to affect all of our opponent's board. Pick them up and let us have some fun. And then Zealot Sandy Flare. Whenever an opponent mills a one or more creature cards, we create a 1-1 one, one horror. Uh, one and tap to make a player mill three. This is just fun because we're going to be milling our opponents and it's a triggered ability, so hopefully we can get a bunch more horror tokens with it. Um, I want to give a quick, um, just a little quick of a mention to Sakashima and Spark Double. These are in here so that we can copy um, Captain Nagathrod and get more triggers of it, but we can also copy any of our other horrors and get their effects more than once and hopefully just start to gel and take over the game. We have so many cool horrors in the deck. I didn't get to talk about all of them here, but again, things like Sakashima and spark double allow us to copy them and have some fun okay well, we talked about mill so let's talk about milling cards fractured sanity each opponent mills 14 and when we cycle it if we cycle it and set each opponent mills four again a great way to nuke somebody's help nuke people's libraries and potentially get some things on instep glimpse glimpse the unthinkable two mana to mill somebody for 10 Madding cacophony each opponent mills eight cards and if we kick it each opponent mills half their library rounded up just a way to get through people's graveyards mind grind we set x to any value we can pay for and each opponent reveals cards on the top of their library until they reveal that many lands and then puts all cards that revealed that way into the graveyard there's a great way to again just mass mill decks if we need some help uh, getting those decks down and then of course mind crank which is going to effectively double um our our opponent our our commander's ability it says whenever an opponent loses life that player mills that many cards but the other thing i like about mind crank is anytime our opponents deal damage to each other uh they're going to they're going to to mill cards anytime they're dealt damage by a spell they're going to mill cards that's going to help us mill our opponents out and take care of their boards instead of just needing to hit them with our horrors okay well, I think Mill's a pretty obvious way to end the game. But there's some of the cheeky ways we can kind of help end the game. Things like Reflections of the Jar to double up on our horrors. Virtue of Persistence to, at the beginning of our upkeep, bring a creature back from our graveyard, from any graveyard to the battlefield. It's a way to kind of continue to help steal our opponent's things and um, get value. We have things like Court of Cunning that when we're the Monarch, everybody's milling 10, but otherwise everybody mills 2 at the start of our upkeep, which just allows us to... Um, get a handle on making sure cards are there for captain to take back but we do have a pretty deadly combo in the deck and it's between eater of the dead a five mana three four uh horror that says for zero mana we tap it or we we can take one creature from any graveyard and remove it from the game so exile a creature from a graveyard and if we do we untap it and phoenix which says Creatures you control have tap. Target player puts X cards from his or her library into a graveyard where X is this creature's toughness. So how this commander, how this uh, combat effectively works is we're going to tap Eater of the Dead for Phoenix's ability to have someone mill four because that's Eater of the Dead's toughness. We're going to then try to untap Eater of the Dead by hitting somebody, getting a creature out of their graveyard. And hopefully if our opponents are playing enough creatures we may be ideally be able to mill our all of our opponents out for a game of course we can also use our creatures from our graveyard to untap it if need be but again the goal would be to 
start nuking our opponents. Phoenix also really works well with these creatures that are star star, where stars the amount of cards that are in people's graveyards, like a uh, Night Howler and Consuming Aberration. Because then we could be nuking somebody for 25, 30 cards at once. And it's going to be very tough for our opponents to deal with that. One, if they're not playing things like the Shuffle Titans or those graveyard decks to handle us milling that many cards. Yes, this is a Magic Christmas land where we see all of these things. But again, I think we're going to get to a point where it's it's a plus side if we see it. Otherwise, I think we're just going to create a lot of trouble for our opponents with some of this mill and some of these effects that we have. And again, and then being able to take their best things um, if if we want them, which I think is going to be really fun. I like this because it's a mid rangey deck. It's going to mill. It's going to be hard to deal with with the menace. But we're playing two Jace Planeswalkers that are actually both pretty cool. Jace Memory Adept. The zero says target player puts the top 10 cards of their library into their graveyard. This is beneficial when the captain's out because then we get to see a bunch of extra cards. And the minus seven is any number of target players each draw 20 cards, which could potentially help mill out our opponents by them just drawing. And then Jace the Perfective Mind. Uh, the minus two says target player mills three cards. And then if that player's graveyard has 20 more cards in it, we draw three cards. Otherwise, we draw a card. And the minus X has a target player mill three times X cards. Um, I like this because we could plus it up to start and start um, getting our opponent's creatures to be a little bit less good, start milling people out and drawing cards once they hit a certain point, and then if we needed to, we could put this right down, minus X to mill someone for 15 if we needed to, and just start hurting them. Again, this deck, for some reason, has always was always interested me, it's always been a ton of fun. And I hope this is the kind of deck that interests you as well. But let's get into the cards that I thought about really adding, but I just couldn't get in there. They were cards that I, I wanted to. I think they're well worth the spot. Uh, but maybe if we were to test this deck and take it forward, we might consider. The first is Bruvec the Grand Duke. And of course, one of the most popular mill commanders of all time, especially for persistent petitioners, a card we're not playing, of course, because we're playing the horrors. But it says if an opponent would mill one or more cards, they mill twice that many cards instead. Of course, a complete combo with Maddening Cacophony. If you kick it with a Brubeck out, all your opponents are milling their entire libraries, which, of course, is a quick way to end the game. The only reason Brubeck isn't in here is just for the cost. Uh, it's about to get that great reprint of Ravico Remastered, so I'm sure this card's going to go down slightly. But I think it's worth being one of the only non-horror creatures you play in the deck. Again, just because with Captain, it's just going to keep nuking people for more and more cards. We could throw in that other Sakashima we're not playing. Again, just to give another option of another copier and have the option to bounce sh this Sakashima back to our hand to copy something else if we want to, where Spark Double and the other Sakashima are just going to be stuck as being what they're going to be. So that's another option, a way to kind of have some fun there. And then we're playing Strionic Resonator, but we could also bring in Lithform Engine as well to try to double up on Captain's ability at the end of turn by paying two mana into either Strionic or Lithform Engine to copy it and get another thing back. I think that seems fun. You can also use Lithoform to copy a lot of other things or, or, or copy spells. But I just think it seems really fun to pay two mana and get another thing back through the captain that we had mill out. But let's get into the goldfish, and I would love to hear what you guys think down in the comments section below. We start with a five lander, which I feel like is not what I would expect in a deck like this. But I say let's take it. Turn one, I've got nothing to play, so I'm happy to play that Temple of Deceit. Let's scry one. We see an Arcane Signet, and I'm happy to keep that on top. Turn two, we can play that Aquifer and Tapped, but I think we want to play an Island here and get that Arcane Signet down. We still can't get our Commander down turn three, but that's okay. We draw a Restless Reef. Get one of our tap lands in here and get the get the chromatic lantern down. So now we're really ramping well. We have another tap to land or two we need to put in, but that's okay because we've got some good mana here. Uh, we'll put in another one of our tap land, but we are at five, so we can play the captain. We see Grazalax. Whenever a creature we control becomes blocked, you may return it to its owner's hand. Whenever one or more creatures deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. And we have Guilt Feeder. Attack whenever it attacks and isn't blocked, if any player loses one life for each card in their graveyard, which can be a great way to nuke our opponents for damage. I think we get the captain down. Although we won't see our opponents mill any cards this turn um, because it can't attack, I still think it's worth getting it down and getting it set up. We'll put the reef in tapped again because we do need to start getting these tap lands in. Now we're up to six mana. We have the grass for three, but I kind of like guilt, guilt uh, feeder here for five. Get it in, get it started. Um, Captain, if it has a great attack and hit somebody in, 
and uh, mill someone for three and potentially get something back. The next turn, we see a Time Wipe, which is a great card giving us another turn. Uh, Memory Plunder is a cool card, playing something out of somebody's graveyard. I don't mind getting the Graz down here and taking a good swing or two here with um, Captain and Guild Feeder if we can into somebody, get them to mill some cards, maybe take a thing or two, and depending on what we mill, maybe we think about it, turning, turning over the extra turn here. Otherwise, I say we leave up the plunder. Maybe we can take advantage of something that got milled into somebody's graveyard for us to use. We'll go one more turn. We see a Defiler of Flesh giving um, a ability to play black, a black instead of a two life instead of a black on permanence. And where we cast a black permanent creature gets pulse and pulse when it menace on a turn. At the end of the turn, it is, day it is a horror, so we want to put it down there. Again, take some attacks with the Guilt Feeder and Captain. Uh, they have menace. So they can potentially not be blocked. And again, if we find something good, take it and take the extra turn. But again, here you go. Not a bad board stave. Just took a piece of ramp or two. We have these horrors. They have menace. Some people are going to want to block them. Some people aren't. Maybe we try to find the right attacks, mill some people, take our opponent's things, and profit. Let me know what you think of Captain DeCathrod uh, down in the comment section below. Again, the more that I look at the de this deck, the more I like it. And I might be the first Demir deck I ever even even think about building one because the precon's actually really good if you're even half interested in captain the gathrod pick up the precon it does have a lot of really great cards in it as far as reprints go and um, some of the cards in in the deck in a great position for you to start from yes some of these horrors and some of these cards aren't in the deck which of course will cause you to have to spend some money of course but i think the the precon's well worth it you get a great section of horrors you're going to spend some money on the ramp and the mill stuff but I think that's okay. Um, I think it's well worth it. And the deck, I think, again, the pre-cons is very good out of the box. It's a fun deck. And I think it'll probably be worth your time. But let me know what you think of the captain down in the comment section below. And I will catch you guys next time.